What's up YouTube family? It's Ben here with VW Family Farm and today I'm doing what y'all have requested for us to do beehives, bee boxes, and swarm traps. Stay tuned. All right, if this is your first time watching one of our videos, welcome to the BW Family Forum family. We call all of our YouTube viewers our family. We want y'all to respond to us, interact with us and everything just like family. So if this is your first time watching, good deal, welcome to the family. We've had several requests on setting up or showing how we set up swarm traps and bee boxes. I'm gonna run through real quick how I catch wild swarms free of charge virtually you do have to invest it first these right here are flower pots biodegradable flower pots this size right here is a it's a 15 by 16 flower pot i got this off of i bought a whole case of them off a of greenhouse mega store these are the easy things to get a hold of so this right here is going to be the hardest thing to get is the beeswax honeycomb that's going to be your most difficult part <clears throat> but you can buy these by singles or by the case. Also inside this, we've got a straw. Oh, let's see, where's that one piece? Here it is, McDonald's straw. And I know all y'all out in California, they say straws are getting harder to come by. You better save them. Inside the straw, why do we use a straw? I use cotton balls and inside the straw is the cotton ball and that is soaked with lemongrass oil. A regular bottle of lemongrass oil. Not 100% sure where I got that. I got it online, I know that. You can get it anywhere. Uh, so let's start with this one. This is my favorite. This is by far, I've caught the most swarms with these. So all you do is you can either melt wax and attach the honeycomb to the very top of that, put you a short piece of straw with cotton ball soaked in lemongrass oil you don't have to soak it real moist or whatever just get you three or four drops on there other than that we use some spray foam and spray foamed up three of the four holes we left one open for an entrance as you can see honeycomb on top entrance on bottom set it on a piece of plywood just big enough to hold the swarm trap I use five or six screws, go around it. After you've soaked that uh, straw with lemongrass, my biggest advice, put two screws like at say the 11 o'clock and one o'clock or 1.30. All right, there's your swarm trap. I've got one hole in this board. Most of my boards are gonna have holes on the bottom corners also. That way, you put a nail or a screw into a tree or wherever you're gonna hang it. I've seen people hang them on the side of buildings, on the side of um, privacy fences. There is no telling where you're gonna catch wild bees. And that is why, or I call them feral bees also. That is why I have so many of these. I think right now I've got like 16 different swarm traps of these types. I've got two different sizes. By far, this one's my most favorite. <clears throat> the reason I put two holes on most of my boards down at the bottom, as y'all know, we farm, so we cut off hay string. I'll take hay string, wrap it around the tree. That way the thing, if the wind's blowing, it don't just sit here and do this. Hay string around the bottom, wrapped around the tree, keeps it nice and tight. But I'd about guarantee that will work for you. Out of one tree in the country club where Andrew's mom and dad lives, I caught seven or nine different swarms out of one 
one swarm trap hanging in one tree. Next, this is another swarm trap. If you go to locations and you're setting a swarm trap that you're not going to be checking very often, this is most definitely the one I would suggest because all it is is pretty much like a five frame nuke just made out of cheap, cheap wood put together put them together uh, as cheaply as you can another thing you're gonna have to have that's hard to come by is an old frame an open frame with some drawn wax honeycomb on it that's your attractant just like in the other one and then this is set for deep frames but off to the side I put medium super frames or shallow super frames whatever I got this one is coated in wax that way it gives them it they see it and they see more room in there they see room to build all this is is a five frame nuke beehive I use them and it's the coats beehive I use them as swarm traps you can get this offline this will be a, a layout diagram let me flip it on its side exactly this is a four by eight sheet of plywood like it says right here four by eight sheet of half inch plywood and it tells you how to cut uh, let's see I think you get yeah you can get two boxes out of one of these it tells you your dimensions of every piece labels the, the sides actually it's um, that's four four boxes. I'm sorry it's been a while since I've done this four different boxes out of one four by eight sheet of plywood there's your sizes there's what it's going to turn into easy peasy so that is one that you would set somewhere that you're not going to check but maybe once every two weeks once a month that way if you catch because in one of these if you catch a beehive you definitely need it especially depending on what time of year if if it's early spring you need that beehive you need to get them them bees out of there within a day two days tops i've seen them fill one of these things completely completely full in a week moving right along this right here is the size of uh of honeycomb that you would need to put in one of those something at least so i would say that size maybe a little bigger but that's generally the size I use. You can see my hand. Somebody want to know how hard it is to build a bee box. Now granted, this right here saves a little bit of time and makes everything a little more square. I got this along with all of my unassembled boxes when we bought that uh, guy out that was up near Mansfield, Missouri. What this is, is you slide one side of the box in there always make sure your handles are on the right sides another box in there why don't we grab me a rubber mallet all right you do not have to build your boxes like this but they hold together so much better if all your boards i don't know what they call that technical term for it but notched that way they all interlock together all right Lane's going to finish putting all the nails in it but as you can see how quick that was We've got one complete box. What was that? Two minutes. So you can order one of these unassembled, unpainted, put it together in just a few minutes. I, did, I will say that that jig helps keep it square. So, but after you do one of them, you do want to paint it. Do not paint the inside. Never paint the inside of a beehive. You either want to paint it white. Uh, we do colors. I've got blue. We've got pink. Uh, Emily, help me out. What all color? Purple. Yeah, purple. I think I got an orange. Mix them up. One reason I like to mix them up if I've read, if you're keeping these your beehives and you've got multiple, you're keeping them side by side by side. It is harder for the queen bee 
which only flies out of the hive to go mate and then come back. It's harder her, for her to identify which beehive she's supposed to come back to because she's only boom and then coming back. If you, they say if you color code them or put designs on the front entrance of them, I don't know how they know this, but I guess they've talked to the queen bee. She says she needs something to know which door to come back home to. That's my advice. I would not paint them all the same color. I know other people that stain them. Um, I, I don't stain mine because I want the lighter colors for heat during the summer. I do keep my beehives out in the middle of a wide open field now. I used to put them under shade trees or around shade trees. I had a whole lot more problem with hive beetles. I think that's about it. So there is your intro to catching wild swarms, putting these together. If you're beginning, I would not recommend putting your frames together. I buy them from Man Lake, already assembled, um, already waxed. I buy the wooden frames, the plastic foundation, wax coated or double wax coated. That way they'll build a whole lot faster. This is what they look like. After they've drawn them out, you can tell right here the different colors. More than likely this was brood, this was honey. This is where eggs have hatched and they left just a little bit of cocoon in there. I can definitely tell you that was brood. You spend just a little bit more money and get the best quality frames you can get out there on the market, they will definitely pull their honeycomb a lot faster. So, other than that, if there's any questions, drop them in the comments below. If this helped you out, give us a big old thumbs up. Till next time, thanks for watching, and God bless.